So it is the holiday season, and that means lots of ads on TV with URLs and domain names displayed. And in a couple of weeks, the United States is going to have a pretty darn big football game, which will have lots of commercials, many of which are showing URLs. So all it takes is one wrong keystroke, and now a customer is going to the wrong website. This is called typo squatting, and it's something that you need to be on the lookout for at your company. Now, oftentimes, a malicious actor will create a website that looks exactly like the target website. I was recently in Canada briefing the Royal Canadian Mounted Police on cybersecurity for the Grey Cup, which is their major championship football game. And one good example I gave was this. Okay, look at these two websites. In this case, these two websites look exactly the same, except one says Canada Drives and one says Canada Dries. Now, if you're watching TV and you're on your phone and you just make one mistake, you can easily land on the wrong web page that looks like the web page that you're supposed to go to. Now, if the user thinks it's the correct web page, but it's actually something else, a malicious actor can steal all kinds of data. Now, you don't just have to worry about misspellings. You have to worry about hyphenated names and wrong domain endings. So, for example, and this is a good one. I went to school for cybersecurity at the University of Maryland. That URL is umd.edu. But look at UMD Academy. That's open. So is umd.courses. So is umd.education, uh, umd.mba, and umd.university. And the University of Maryland has not bought any of these domain names. So this isn't a cybersecurity issue in the traditional sense of you being at risk of being hacked or being exploited. It's a risk that your customers might face. But the problem is that something like this could tarnish your brand, especially if you don't find out about it in time and people actually think that they're interacting with you. But the good news is there is a way to prevent this from happening. I'm going to tell you how to do it right after I pay the bills with Atlas VPN. So I'm dressed a little bit differently right now. I'm down in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and there is no password to get on the Wi-Fi at the hotel I'm at. I'm sitting in the business center. I can't even freaking believe this. I really do use Atlas VPN when I travel because I want to have a private Christmas and a safe new year, and you can as well if you use Atlas VPN. Right now, you can get it for $1.70 a month with six months free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. So click the link in the description below to get this Christmas deal right now. And you know, it's funny is normally I wouldn't be down here, but I've been traveling so much that my phone is actually down to 10% of my data in hotspot mode, so I literally have to use the hotel Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN helps keep you safe online by creating a private tunnel between you and the public internet that hackers and rogue government agents can't penetrate. So have a private Christmas and a safe new year when you steal this Christmas deal and get Atlas VPN for only $1.70 a month plus six months free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in the description below right now to take advantage of this Christmas offer. Thanks for sticking with me. Now, luckily, there is a way to figure out if someone has taken a similar domain name, and that is with a Python program called DNS Twist. Now, you can find out how to install in the description below, but I'm actually going to walk you through an install and running it a couple of times to kind of show you how it works. Now, I'm running this instance in uh, Linux on a Hyper-V VM for this exercise. I haven't tested it out in WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux yet. It might work there. Someone who's watching this, give that a shot and let me know in the comments whether using this in Windows Subsystem for Linux worked. That way you won't have to go through installing Hyper-V. Uh, now to start, let's make sure that you have the Python programming language installed. So open up a console window and type Python 3. So if you don't have Python 3, install that first. Then come back and let's continue. If you do have Python installed, then you just need to check for PIP, or Preferred Installer Program. You can do that by typing Python 3-mpip-version. Now, if PIP is not installed, go get PIP installed, then come back here and let's continue. Now let's use PIP to install the requirements for DNS Twist. So we're going to do PIP install DNS Twist full. Now that we have the requirements, we can install DNS Twist. On Ubuntu Linux, which is what I'm using, the command will be sudo apt install DNS Twist. Now once it's installed, you have a couple of options. If you want to get started right away, just enter DNS Twist dash dash ms check 
domain.name where domain.name is the domain that you want to check. Um, so domain.name is your target domain. So I'm just going to start with my website, ryanmcbeth.com. And the process will start. Okay, so I kind of fast forwarded time here. But this gives me all the possible permutations, so it's very useful in planning. But it doesn't tell me if anyone actually bought any of the domains. So in order to do that, let's see how many domains are registered. So now we're going to type DNS twist dash dash registered, and then the domain name, in this case, uh, ryanmcbeth.com. And let's fast forward time. And that'll give you every similar domain that is registered to someone. And it'll allow you to selectively target sites that are similar to yours for legal action or takedown. As you can see, somebody bought ryan.mcbeth.com. So that's something I might have to investigate. Now, if you want to check different levels of top level domains, you can actually put them in a dictionary file and pass them into DNS twist. So in this case, I'm going to use the University of Maryland and that whole dot .university, dot .education, dot .mba. So I created a file here uh, called TLD or top level domain dot .dict. And we just do DNS twist dash dash TLD uh, for file name dash dash registered. Uh, and we're going to go after umd.edu. And as you can see, there are multiple variations, but everything looks pretty legit. Uh, of course, you might want to check manually to be sure. Now, if you're in a real hurry, you can go to dnstwist.it. Uh, that's a web version that you can't control as well. You don't really have any kind of fine tuning, but it's good for a preliminary scan if you're concerned. And it's easy enough for your legal department to use in case they want to take this process over and once every week or so search for any similar domains. So if you have any other tips to fight type of squatting, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Yo, 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 what up? It's me, MCI TV. You like Ryan Macbeth? We got crazy Ryan Macbeth shirts, yo. Hi, Mars. Patriot. Toatas. That's like a son to me. We even have Spall Street Bets and whatever the heck this is. So come on down to Bunker Branding or I'll get Team Yankee on you.